Hey peeps, today we'll be talking about Rebel Leaders. In particular, I'll be showing you how you can find the best formations for your account, even if you're free to play. So, probably you're watching this video because you're tired of searching and asking people about it and only receiving answers that don't satisfy you about commanders you don't own or don't have at a decent level, whatever. Uh, well, with this guide, it you who will be figuring out the formations. You won't depend on someone else's answer. So let's start with the rebel leader concept as a whole so you can understand where my logic further on is coming from. So first, the battles are six versus one. Uh, this is important because that means your middle commander in the front row is the only one taking damage, while all six of your commanders are dealing damage to one target. Second, the enemy is always in the front row. This is important because if the enemy is spear or bow, they'll be making the first hit. Uh, especially if you're approaching them with infantry or cavalry, uh, you won't be returning that hit. So it's one, one hit more for the enemy rebel leader and that means they'll cast their skill faster and it snowballs. Uh, so lastly, every different type of rebel leader has their own stats. Uh, that's one of the reasons uh, for the same formation to perform differently against two separate targets. The other reason, of course, is the random factor, for example, critical strikes. Uh, but yeah. So now when we know the general concept, let's dive into the formations themselves. Uh, each formation can have a couple of types of commanders. We have commanders that sit in the mid front and take damage, usually tanks. Uh, we have support commanders that provide the formation with shields, heals, and different types of buffs. We have, of course, damage commanders that have the only job to deal damage. And we have some commanders that have special utility abilities like stuns, reductions, either health, attack, or uh, defense reductions, whatever. Uh, we have also bleed, and so on. The, there are a lot of them. So, as you see, the types are a lot and making the right mix of them could be quite hard. So, so where do we begin with that? Naturally, you first want to determine against what type of rebel leader you'll be fighting. If it's Inf, Cav or Spear, you don't want to be sending commanders that would be countered, as they won't deal as much damage. Against Bowman commanders, you can go with whatever you like, but for the other three, uh, for example, if it's an infantry rebel leader, you shouldn't be sending spearmen, just because even if your spearmen can survive against that infantry rebel leader, they won't be able to deal as much damage as, for example, cavalry commanders or even infantry commanders. The next important point when building your formation is to know what each commander does. You can go to the uh, commander menu, uh, you can choose any commander, for example, I don't know, let's go with Annie, and you can go to the guards section. Here you can see the abilities that Annie use, uses in, in battle with rebel leaders. Uh, and you should do that with every commander that you own. Uh, and by doing that, you can learn a lot about what each commander does and how useful they would be in your formation and the synergy in your formation. For example, a lot of people use Sinara uh, against spear rebel leaders. But why is that? Most of the people don't know and just copied the formation from someone else. Uh, but in reality, if we just go to Sinara's guard's abilities, we can see that first she does a lot of damage, but also she has uh, defense reduction. And her kit makes her even more valuable asset to your team. And that's just one example about Sinara. There are many more like this one. If, if you start reading the descriptions of all the commanders, you will find more like, like this one. Uh, so yeah, being familiar with uh, a commander's abilities is crucial when you're building a formation. And I'm not talking only about the main ability, but also her passive effects uh, and so on. So let's say that you read all the abilities of your commanders. What are you searching for when reading them? It's quite simple. First off, you need a commander that will be in the mid front. As we said earlier, they will be the one who will take all the damage from the enemy. And logically, it has to be a commander that is either a tank, a commander with lots of sustain, or a commander that benefits from being on low health like Enzo or Lario. Uh, 
you can find such commanders uh, on your account just by uh, first for commanders like Enzo by reading their abilities and second for I don't know let's say Kevin uh, by just just by looking at their stats you want the health and defense stats to be high uh, if I go to another commander that isn't a tank let's say Shayla uh, she has much worse stats for health and defense that's how you can know if uh, if a commander is a decent tank and would uh, be able to take a lot of damage or not Next, you want to determine how many support commanders you need. If your mid front can survive the attacks of the rebel leader, you want to be looking at buffing commanders like uh, Jean, Tyrion and, and so on. Commanders that give your team more stats, uh, preferably attacking stats. Uh, the attack stat is better. Uh, if the mid front is a bit more squishy, you should also include either a shielding commander or a healing commander. Uh, let's say uh, we can use for healing commander uh, Sansa Stark. We can use uh, also Jean. Uh, she has a decent heal. For shielding commander, we can use Egbert, Marjorie. Uh, you can see all that stuff again by reading the guards' abilities and determine which one uh, for your account would be best because everyone ha everyone is on a different progress. Uh, so. Keep in mind that putting two support commanders in your formation would reduce your overall damage as you're taking one damage dealer spot and giving it to a low damage supportive commander. That's important. Uh, and finally, you should fill up the remaining spots with damage commanders. For them, you just want to put in the ones that deal the most damage. Uh, number wise or percent wise, uh, there are commanders that deal damage in percent, like Lutz or Jamie. Uh, for example, you can read that in their abilities. Uh, a tip for positioning is to use the ones that deal the most damage in the front row. By doing that, they'll start attacking earlier than the rest, sneaking an extra hit during battles, which can be a deciding factor uh, if they get to use their ability one time more or less. Most likely, you have a couple of commanders for each role in your formation, for the tank, for the supports and the damage dealers. Uh, the important thing here is to not just stop at one formation, but test them all. Kill 3-4 rebel leaders with each combination of commanders. Watch some replays of the battles, even if it's boring. I know it's boring, but you have to do it. Uh, and you're gonna see how each different combination is, perfor is performing and you can pick the best performing one for your account. I know it can take some time and it will take a lot of motivation, but in the long run it would be worth it. You'll be able to maximize your rebel leader hits and efficiency.